is, is the developer automation and continuous integration mini comp. Session two, James Blair is going to talk about <coughs> Zool. Uh, hi, I'm James Blair, and I'm going to talk about Zool. Uh, who here was um, here for Monty's talk this morning? So, almost all of you. Um, that being the case, I'm going to uh, breeze over some things at the beginning, particularly the slides that are exact duplicates of slides from Monty's talk. Um, <laughs> So uh, this, this talk is about one of the pieces of software that uh, we use in the OpenStack infrastructure. Monty mentioned it this morning. It's called Zool. And it's the thing that we use to tie Garrett and Jenkins together. Uh, it drives a lot of the automation that, uh, that we do in the project. Um, and uh, assuming that I finish up a little bit earlier as I skip over uh, things that Monty already covered, um, I'll fill in some time talking about some of the other things Monty mentioned, like uh, Jenkins Job Builder and anything else that anybody thinks is interesting. So, um, so I'm going to cover just a little bit of the development process in here. Um, maybe flesh out a little bit more about project gating, because that's, that's pretty key to what we're doing. Talk about Zool, and um, uh, maybe talk about the Jenkins API a little bit, um, which uh, Zool uses pretty heavily to, to get its work done. Um, uh, everybody know what OpenStack is? Um, we, lots of people have been mentioning it all day long, but hey, it's a uh, open source. Only vaguely. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know how you develop it pretty well, but. Right, right yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So hey, let's start with that then. Um, so OpenStack is open source software for building public and private clouds. So it's the, um, it's, it's uh, as Monty mentioned, it's actually a collection of projects that work together to give you a complete um, cloud infrastructure. So if you need to spin up virtual machines or have you know, globally distributed object storage, um, uh, uh, federated authentication, all of the kinds of things that you'd need to do uh, cloudy things, uh, OpenStack is open source software to do that. Uh, there are a couple of uh, major public cloud providers uh, running the software, uh, Rackspace and HP come to mind. Um, but uh, one of the key things is uh, you can download it, run it yourself inside your own enterprise. So it's great for that whole public, private, hybrid cloud thing. Um, so that's that's uh, OpenStack, and we'll be you know I'll use some some examples of some of our specific projects uh, in here. And here's a list of I think these are the current um, core. Core projects. Uh, yes. Not there. There, I think there are 14 here. Monty mentioned 18. That's because we have a couple more in incubation um, that are sort of. Honestly, the, the the idea is that they're ramping up to to sort of join the project, join our infrastructure, the development environment, get coordinated in our release. Uh, as we've automated more and more of these systems, uh, that's become easier and easier. So actually, our incubated projects already mostly behave like core projects, which is uh, fantastic. Um, there are, uh, how many Monty, how many contributors? 500 now. Oh, there are 500 active technical contributors <laughs> um, uh, working on these uh, projects. Um, a lot of them come from commercial entities, uh, so these are, um, you know, developers who are uh, paid to work full or part time on this open source project. Um, some of them are some of them are new to open source software development. Some of them are old hats. Um, some of them are good programmers. Some of them less so. Um, we get all kinds, and a lot of what we're trying to do here is to to level the playing field, uh, to make sure that um, that everybody can get their work done, uh, and people aren't uh, inhibited from doing their work by say bad code landing in the tree, things like that. Um, so, uh, um, a lot of what we're doing is uh, trying to do things consistently. Um, we're trying to make it so that developers uh, don't waste their time. Um, you know, we're we're running tests in standardized ways. We're running them automatically for them. Um, it, we're trying to make it so that as as um, you know, as we've added these 500 developers, uh, that, it, that they get up to speed pretty quickly and uh, and uh, join our our uh, our workflow. Um, you've, if you were here this morning, you saw this exact slide. 
Um, but the, 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 uh, it, it bears a little bit of repeating. Uh, the, the gated trunk is really key to how we do that. Um, basically, that means that every change um, has to be, uh, is automatically tested uh, before it lands into the trunk of the repository. So um, you know that, that when, you, when you update your local copy, when you pull from, from GitHub or wherever, um, you know, that all, of, you know that, that all of the tests already pass. Uh, you can start working on what you're working on. Uh, and you have some confidence that if you write some code, run the tests, and they fail, uh, it's probably actually your fault. Um, so that's actually, you know, a, uh, a big thing for developers to to always have that confidence, especially for a, a project uh, this large. So, um, so everything that we do is is automated. Here's a little screenshot um, uh, of our our Jenkins gating jobs. These are just a few of them, and actually, it uh, goes on quite a bit. We we. I don't know how many gating jobs we have right now, but in total we have 450 jobs in Jenkins. Um, so there's quite a bit going on here. Um, though, as Monty pointed out earlier, we don't actually look at this screen much anymore. Um, our most developers interact with Jenkins through Garrett uh, after um, after feedback on changes is left there, which I'll talk about later. Um, so basically, the the process flow for uh, developers is that. Um, you know, you, you write some code, you test it locally, you submit it to Garrett. Um, Zool causes uh, um, tests to run in Jenkins on, uh, on the code that you just uploaded to Garrett uh, immediately. So you, you have feedback as fast as we can get it to you uh, as to whether it passes all the automated uh, tests. Um, then it goes through peer review. Uh, if, if the core developers on the project um, like what they see. Um, if two of them approve of that, uh, that code, uh, they can decide that it's ready to be merged. Um, and then, uh, then the code is run through tests again because the, the state of the repository in the meantime may have moved, probably has actually. So we, we run it through tests one more time right before we, we merge it to make sure that it's, uh, it actually still passes tests. Uh, and then it's either merged into the repo or not. And assuming it is, then we start doing post-merge jobs like building tarballs, doing coverage analysis, things like that. Um, so Garrett is a code review system uh, built by Google for the Android project. It's a standalone patch review system heavily based on Git. Um, and it's, it's pretty key to our workflow. Like I said, that's that's not only do, do uh, developers upload changes to Garrett, so that's, you know, that's their entry point into contributing a change to the project, but that's also where all the code review happens, and that's where all the, the, um, the reports from tests that we run, and actually tests that other people run as well, uh, can all be reported back into Garrett. So um, it's, it's a big part of a developer's uh, workday uh, when they're doing code reviews or submitting changes to the project. Um, <coughs> In, in Garrett, we basically have a couple of states in the workflow. You submit um, uh, it, uh, a, a change can also, um, this is actually more of a matrix, um, but a change can, uh, after a change is, is submitted to Garrett for review, um, you know, we, we, we have an indication of whether it's been verified or not by the automated testing systems. We have indications as to whether it's been reviewed and what kinds of review scores it's gotten, how many people have reviewed it. Uh, and then, um, you know, uh, the core developers decide whether to accept it and, and merge it. Uh, so there's, there's a couple of key types of events in Garrett which Zool acts on, uh, and these will be important as I sort of explain um, the, the different kinds of automation we do in, in Zool. So whenever a change is uploaded to Garrett, um, that emits an event, and you can actually consume this event over um, an SSH stream. Um, uh, it just spits out uh, uh, JSON uh, information about the event. And so uh, Zool watches this in real time. And, uh, and, and so as soon as a patch set is uploaded, that's when we start running the check jobs to try to get information back to the developers as quickly as possible about whether the, the change even might possibly work or not. 
Uh, when a change is merged, that's also um, emits an event, or when somebody leaves a comment on a change, or or leaves a vote on a change, um, that uh, that's another event. It's the comment added event. So there's one more too. There's also ref updated. So if you're pushing tags or something like that, uh, so uh, we get notification when somebody pushes a tag, and we can trigger off of that. So uh, this is what. Um, this is a section of the page in Garrett. Um, I think I can make this a little bigger. Uh, that shows what the feedback looks like, both from users and from Jenkins. Uh, these all actually expand more if you want to see comments. You, could, uh, you, you can see that Daniel you know, actually wrote some, some comments here, like, that's a good question. Uh, I was trying to do this. and So anyway, um, developers go back and forth on the implementation of a change, that sort of thing. Uh, all along, whenever somebody uploads a new patch set, um, um, like uh, here somebody, somebody uploaded patch set five, um, and then Jenkins came back and said, yeah, that works. Uh, somebody, uh, then they uploaded patch set six, Jenkins came back and again said that it works. And then we've got uh, links to all of the, the test outputs so that developers can go in and see um, uh, the logs from running the tests. Uh, if something fails, they can try to figure out how the, uh, what caused the failure, that, that sort of thing. Um, so we have uh, a, a couple types of jobs. Um, the, the check and the gate jobs are basically the same jobs. Um, they're, just, they're going to run the unit tests. They're going to run integration tests and code style tests. and anything else that, that we've decided that we should start gating on. Um, hopefully someday they'll, they'll run upgrade tests and, and things like that as well. Um, so those are, those are identical jobs. They're just run in different contexts. When it's run in the context of, of checking a new change that's uploaded, uh, we don't really care so much about um, the current state of the repository. We just, we just test it against what the current state of the repository is. Uh, when, we, when we run it in the gate um, context, then we're we're actually um, we're trying to to make sure that when the change lands, we're testing everything in exactly that configuration. So, like as Monty put it before, we're we're trying to test the ultimate state of the repository before that actually becomes the state of the repository. Uh, and like I mentioned, uh, once something lands, we we build document uh, documentation and upload it. We build tarballs and um, sometimes, and, uh, <laughs> and push things up to PyPy also sometimes. So um, what we found is that uh, we, we started doing this kind of workflow with the Garrett trigger plugin for Jenkins, which is a great tool um, that, that watches that event stream that I mentioned and triggers jobs in Jenkins. And it's, it's a great way to, to, um, to uh, get started in, in integrating Garrett and Jenkins, uh, and and it's actually quite sufficient for, you know, um, projects up to a certain size. What we found is with so many of our projects, um, and their interdependency on each other in particular, uh, it wasn't. We needed something that could both handle more complex arrangements than the Garrett Trigger plugin, and at the same time was actually easier to use and configure. So we wrote Zool, which is a general purpose trunk gating system based. Uh, um, pretty heavily on Garrett, pretty lightly on Jenkins. Um, uh, you could probably replace the Jenkins bits with something else if you want to. And as Monty mentioned, we're going to be changing the way that we talk to Jenkins, uh, hopefully doing it over Gearman. Uh, that actually also opens up the opportunity that Zool could trigger anything um, that you could plug into Gearman instead of just Jenkins. So, um, but uh, another goal of this is, uh, is to make the configuration of the system easy, especially for however many projects that we have. And finally, um, we were running up to against a scaling limit with the Garrett Trigger plugin. Um, we, our integration tests currently take 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and so you can imagine that if what you're trying to do is, is before every change lands, uh, test it uh, in, uh, against the current state of the repository, um, it, logically, the, the most correct way to do that is serially. You, you, you have your current state of the repo, you have a change, you, you, know, you apply the change, you test it, if it works, you merge it, 
then you do the next one, right? Um, if it takes an hour to run our integration test, we can only merge 24 changes in an hour, uh, sorry, in a day, and um, that's not gonna cut it with 500 developers working um, all the time around the clock. So uh, another thing that we did with Zool is to, um, is to give it the ability to test changes in parallel, um, but still do it just as correctly as if we had done them serially. And um, the way we do that is with speculative execution. So um, basically what, what Zool does is it uh, builds up a queue in memory of all of the changes that need to be merged. Um, so that, that queue is a serial data structure. Um, it starts testing all of the changes um, in that queue in parallel with the assumption that they're all going to, su to succeed and they're all going to merge. And um, if that's what happens, then that's great. That means you can merge as many changes as you can test in parallel um, uh, you know, simultaneously. Uh, if um, a change fails, then it's going to have to figure out um, uh, what impact that has on the queue and possibly start over testing some of those changes again. Um, so I have a little bit of uh, visual visualization here about um, this. Uh, it might help. Uh, explain it a little more. So in this, um, we've got two projects. We've got Nova and Keystone, and um, these little dots represent the commits on the, the head of the repository. You know, you can think of this like the little subway map in, in GitK or, or whatever. Um, so, um, you know, here's the head of these two projects. And then, um, say, a developer or developers uh, go into Garrett, do a bunch of code reviews, and say, yeah, these, these changes are all ready to merge. So what happens is Zool, um, uh, as each of those uh, events is emitted by Garrett, uh, Zool picks them up and adds them to a queue. So uh, a developer adds, uh, says that, you know, this change number one for Nova is ready to be merged, and so is this one, and then there's a change for Keystone that needs to be merged, and then a change for Nova. So the reason why these are both uh, enqueued in the same queue is because, as uh, again, as Monty mentioned earlier, all of these projects uh, have separate Git repositories, but they're really the same project. They're highly interdependent, and you can break Nova by merging a bad change to Keystone. So um, our, our integration testing is key, and so what we do is all of the all of the projects that have this kind of relationship with each other, we make sure that uh, changes to those get enqueued into one queue uh, when it's doing this virtual serialization thing. Um, so once uh, once changes hit Zool's uh, queue, um, Zool tells Jenkins to start running uh, test jobs on them. Um, they might take different amounts of time. Some of them might succeed. Some of them might fail. Um, so you know, here we've we've got you know we ran all four. We ran the tests for all four changes in parallel. Um, it looks like Nova has you know four uh, four test jobs. Keystone has three. Um, and uh, once once they're uh, once they're all finished, uh, Zool can decide that okay, yes, this change for Nova passed its tests. It's ready to be merged. Um, this second change for Nova also passed its tests and it's ready to be merged. Um, this change for Keystone failed one of its tests, and so it can't be merged. Um, that means that it gets kicked out of the queue. Now. Um, this change, this fourth change that was also to Nova, it had been tested with the assumption that everything ahead of it was going to merge. And uh, that was true for the first two changes, but that was not true for the third one. Um, so uh, basically the, the state of the repository that, it, that Zool had assumed would be the case when this merged is not the case. And so Zool has to start uh, a new set of tests with the current state of the repository. and. Um, this time it works, so presumably that meant that that change to Keystone actually was the thing that caused this change to fail earlier. So it's actually okay to merge this change. So um, you know, in this case, we merged two changes um, simultaneously, essentially. Uh, then we had to go rerun some tests for an extra one. So in in the best case, you're looking at being able to simultaneously merge as many changes as you can test in parallel. In the worst case, you're looking at the old serialized. Um, system that we had before. 
uh, where where basically Zool might might test a change, it fails, it tries the next one, it fails, uh, and, and that sort of thing. Now, the reality in practice is somewhere in the middle. Uh, we're we're seeing that um, on average, when it's when it's really busy, Zool might merge ten changes simultaneously, and then there's one that fails, and so it gets kicked out, and 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 you know Zool might then test the next 10 in parallel again. So it's, uh, it's a, a significant increase in throughput over what we could do without it. Uh, and the better the code um, and the better the tests, the faster it runs. Can you handle the situation where, like in that, if you had the, the Nova patch number four would work, but only if the keystone change went in? You know what I mean? Two right, right. Uh, yeah, so um, in, in Garrett, there's been a long-standing project to add, to add uh, cross-repo dependencies to, to Garrett natively. That hasn't happened yet. Um, there's a lot of code out there, um, but when, particularly with large changes to Garrett itself, they're really conservative about it. So um, hopefully when, when Garrett understands that natively, um, you know, we'll, we'll start doing something with it. If we need to do that before then, we could actually, we, we could teach Zool how to do that without having Garrett to understand. I mean, of course, we could, we could probably carry this patch ourselves. We're, we're not really, Garrett's written in Java, I should say. Um, so our idea of a fun time isn't main, writing or maintaining a huge patch to a huge Java program. So uh, Zool's written in Python, so it would be far easier for us to just teach Zool to like understand an extra uh, commit message tag or something like that and, and do what you're talking about. But you can, can you guys step past the system when you need to? Can you just go, look, I know there's two patches, broke your test, but please merge both of them and everything will be fine. Um, so that egalitarian, oh right, you weren't, you weren't here this morning. Monty uh, talked about the egalitarian principle that underlies everything that we're doing. Uh, we try to make it so that people aren't special um, and Part of that is is that um, we're we're pretty strict about um, you know these things have to pass tests um, they they you know um, we we try to as much as possible um, follow that because it puts everybody on an equal footing um, that having been said if we really got into a position where where there was some Crazy circular dependency, and we just needed to move past that. Um, we, you know, we could do something like that. We could, we could, we could say, okay, well, you know, we'd run the tests ourselves, make sure that it worked, and, and do that. So, I mean, it's it's a nearly slavish uh, uh, following of of you know of the machine. Um, if we really need to do that, we could, but 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 that puts us in an uncomfortable position, and we don't want to get into it. So. Um, so Zool's configured with a YAML file. Uh, we've discovered that we really like YAML because uh, it's easy for us and machines to read and it lets us um, start to you know, really quickly define nice data structures like you know, we, can, we can have a whole series of different pipelines um, that you know, get nested arbitrarily deep, things like that. Um, so uh, all of the things that we talk about obey YAML configuration files now uh, for this sort of thing. So, um, Zool, Zool has very little idea of our workflow built into it. It's, it's highly generalized. So everything that we do, um, we've, we've used the basic building blocks that Zool provides and we've, we've built pipelines that, that, do, that accommodate our workflow out of them. So uh, uh, the, the jobs that get run when uh, a patch set is uploaded, uh, that's, you know, we define a, a pipeline, we call it check. Uh, oh, I didn't turn off the thing. Um, we, uh, we tell Zool that it's, um, that all of the changes in that pipeline are independent, so it doesn't need to bother doing its virtual serialization thing. It can just test changes and report back as quickly as possible. It should start doing that whenever there's a patch set created event from Garrett. And if um, a change succeeds, it should vote uh, one in the verified code review column in Garrett, and if it fails, it should vote negative one. So Garrett lets us define um, verified code review and then uh, approved. Uh, actually, Garrett lets us define any number of those things. Uh, we've defined verified code review and approved as the different uh, code review voting columns in Garrett. So, so again, none of this is is uh, really 
built into Zool. I mean, it doesn't know what the word verified means. It's just going to pass that into Garrett. Um, it doesn't know what patch set created event is. It's just going to look for one of those. Um, so uh, that actually gives us a lot of flexibility to, to build up these pipelines. So for the gate pipeline, which is where we're actually trying to merge something, uh, that's very, very similar, uh, except that it's a dependent pipeline, meaning it needs to obey not only um, changes that depend on each other in, in Git, uh, but it also obeys the virtual serialization that I mentioned, uh, where um, some, you know, a change enters the pipeline, the next one then, for the purposes of Zool, then depends on that change ahead of it being merged. So um, in this case, we, we run these jobs when somebody leaves a comment in Garrett uh, with an approved vote of one, which is something that only the core developers can do. That's their, their indication that says they, they want this change to merge. Um, we tell it that when it starts um, testing a change, it should it should clear out the verified column in Garrett because at this point it'll probably actually have a plus one in there from the check job. So uh, this gets it cleared out so that when people look at the change, the you know they'll it'll uh, they'll see the current state a little bit better. And they'll they'll see that there is currently no uh, no vote from Jenkins uh, because the the changes uh, the tests are running. And then again when. Um, when it succeeds, uh, it should vote plus two on verified, um, which is more than plus one. Uh, so it's really verified at that point. Uh, but that's actually something that's uh, required by the, the, um, the Garrett rules that we've set up. Uh, you have to have a plus two verified vote before something can change. So this is actually, this is, this is almost the, the, the actual implementation of the gate itself. Uh, you know, it can't merge unless it has a plus two verified, and this is the only way to get it. Uh, and then submit is Garrett speak for merge the change. Uh, and then of course, if something fails, uh, then it gets a minus two, um, just to indicate again that that happened in the gate queue. Um, we can trigger on ref updated events. So that means when, when a change is merged or a tag is pushed, um, both of those kinds of things um, update a ref in Garrett. Uh, you know, obviously it'll, it'll be the master ref if you've just merged a change to master. Um, if you push a tag, it'll be refs, tags, whatever. Um, so uh, in this case, what we're doing is uh, we're actually matching um, branches here because Garrett doesn't put refs on the beginning of a ref if it's branch for some reason. So, um, so this means that whenever we receive a ref update event, event for a branch, then we run the post jobs. So basically that means every time something is merged, um, you know, we, we start running code analysis and documentation builds and things like that. Um, we, with all these building blocks, we actually discovered a couple more things that we could build uh, without, I, I was actually going to, to go add something to, to Zool to, to, to have a system where we could try out new jobs without having them vote. And then I realized I didn't need to write that as code, I could write that as configuration. So here's a pipeline that, that runs jobs on patch set created, again, um, but it doesn't actually vote. Uh, you'll notice there's no section here for, um, for uh, success or failure or anything like that. So it, this just never reports to Garrett. This just triggers jobs in Jenkins and we can go back and figure out um, how those jobs are performing as we develop them and the developers never see it. Um, uh, here's another ref updated where we're actually looking for tags. So uh, Monty was talking about the tag based versioning uh, that we do earlier and this is how that's implemented. So whenever whenever a tag is pushed to Garrett, we run the publish jobs, which as you might expect starts publishing artifacts. Um, so once you've defined all the pipelines, um, you can set up your projects. Here's uh, the definition for Nova. We actually have a few more jobs than this now. But um, you, you can see that, um, that um, you know, since we defined the check pipeline earlier, we say for when a change is uploaded to Nova, uh, these are the jobs that the check pipeline needs to run. First, it checks to see if it can merge. And if that succeeds, then it runs all these other things like uh, the Python unit test, the PEP8 style checks, and the, the integration test. Uh, those, like I said, those same jobs also run on the gate pipeline. We, we don't have to do it this way. We can actually run extra jobs in check to provide feedback to developers that, that maybe doesn't actually affect the gate. 
Um, so that's why they're, they're defined twice, even though they're identical here. Uh, and then uh, once a change lands to Nova, we build a tarball and we upload docs, except we don't actually build a tarball anymore. Um, so uh, the chain, uh, like uh, earlier when I said that Nova and Keystone in that example uh, share a change queue, um, that's calculated automatically by Nova. I'm um, oh, sorry, by Zool. Um, so in this case, we've 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 said that the Nova project um, runs the Gate Tempest Dev Stack VM job, and the Glance project does too. So Zool sees that and says, "Oh, these projects are running the same jobs, uh, therefore they must be related." And so it starts building change queues uh, out of that automatically. So um, if you run the Tempest job, you'll 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 your project will automatically be incorporated in you know, this, this virtual queue that in includes all of the OpenStack jobs. We have a lot of other um, projects in our system, like, for instance, the OpenStack uh, infra repository, uh, where we keep our puppet configuration, things like that, um, that, that don't need to be in that same queue. Uh, and so they, they actually won't be. So those changes might merge a little bit faster if, uh, uh, if the, the main queue is busy. So. Um, Here's another little bit of a visualization of um, what uh, what Zool. Uh, it's not going to get any better. Um, uh, so this is you know a screenshot of what the status page looked like on one particularly busy day, uh, where we've got the um, all of the check jobs running over here in parallel. So so each of these boxes is a change. Um, so. Um, you know, somebody uploaded a change to Keystone, somebody uploaded a change to Swift, to Nova, to Nova, et cetera. Um, and Zool just started running tests on all of these changes in parallel. Over here in the gate queue, um, somebody was really busy uh, approving changes to be merged. Um, so here, somebody approved a change to Tempest, which is our, our integration test suite. Uh, after that, another change to Tempest. Um, you know, and then several more projects. So all of these. These, um, as indicated by these little arrows, are uh, in one of those virtual, ser virtually serialized queues that I mentioned. And so um, if, if all of these uh, finish tests and they all succeed, then they'll all be merged in um, simultaneously. And then uh, the other um, uh, pipelines that we've configured are, mentioned over, uh, are listed over here, but they don't actually have anything running in this example right now. So. Um, Zool uh, uses the Jenkins API to get a lot of its work done. Um, this is sort of a, if, if you use Jenkins um, and you haven't looked at the Jenkins API, it's actually pretty convenient for a lot of, uh, a lot of things, especially if you, you have a large um, project infrastructure that you need to automate. You can get job, um, job lists, lists of views, uh, you can read or write the job configuration. You can launch builds, change build descriptions, cancel, uh, all that sort of thing. So uh, also add new nodes. We actually use that a lot. We, we dynamically add uh, nodes to Jenkins using the API as well. Um, so uh, like I said, Zool, um, Zool does a lot of things right now uh, using this. Uh, to, to integrate with Jenkins. We're, uh, as we develop the Gearman plugin for Jenkins, uh, we'll probably use the Jenkins API less. Um, I mean, obviously, this is, this is over HTTP, so you know, it's, got a, um, it's, it's a little bit looser. It's not long run connections. You have to do lots of error handling. Uh, I think the, the Gearman work that we're doing will actually make the, the integration of things that want to uh, run Jenkins jobs um, a lot nicer and a lot more generalized. Um, so like I said, we do everything in Python. So here's, you know, this is all it takes to, to start building a job in Jenkins using the, the, the Jenkins API from Python. Um, so it's, it's as simple as you would expect it to be. Um, we, Zool gets notifications from Jenkins when jobs are finished. Uh, again, also using, or we actually use the notification plugin to do that. So Jenkins um, makes an HTTP call back to Zool to tell it whenever a job is uh, finished building. So there's just a little, you know, we have to have a, a, a small web server in Zool right now to, to handle that. Um, but it's, it's really easy. It just posts to a URL that you configure and sends you some JSON data. So. Um, the code for 
Zool is uh, in the OpenStack infra org on GitHub here. Um, there's a Launchpad project for it. Uh, we host the documentation, which is, of course, built by one of those docs jobs I mentioned earlier. Um, we host some documentation on our site. You can chat with us in OpenStack infra about any of our tools, uh, and we have a mailing list as well. Um, so, and these slides are also at that GitHub org. So are there any other questions about Zool? So we have a few minutes. Oh, hey. So this is, uh, this is actually the, the real current status page for Zool. Um, so you, know, you, uh, you can waste lots of time just getting mesmerized by this. Um, <laughs> or I can. Um, so you know, here it's, uh, there's two changes that just got uploaded and, and uh, we're running check jobs on. These are all links to the job. So if you're like, oh, hey, look, this pilot job failed. I want to find out why. You can go ahead and, and, and just uh, link straight to the, the running Jenkins job. Yes. I'm, try I'm trying to understand how the um, you know how do people submit their patches? You know, you got um, how do you uh, how, you know? I mean, you you're not committing it to the main trunk, right? right. So you've got some code. Um, what you just generate patches with with patch and submit those. And you submit um, code. So we. Uh -huh. Again. Um, so here, uh, here's what our Garrett looks like. So um, you know somebody has uploaded this change, um, which is two hundred five seven three, which is this one over here in the Zool status queue. Um, so. You know, once once it's uploaded, uh, this is this is what it looks like. It's obviously brand new, so it doesn't actually have any um, any any review comments yet on it or anything. Um, but you don't use the web interface to upload the changes. Uh, in fact, uh, we wrote a pro pro hmm, we wrote a program called Git Review, uh, which uh, acts as a Git subcommand, and what it does is. Uh, um, pushes any outstanding changes in your local branch up to Garrett. So basically the, the developer workflow is you write a change, you git commit it, and then you type git space review, and it does everything automatically to push those changes up to Garrett. So it's actually, um, uh, I really like it. Uh, it makes you know submitting a change way easier than, um, than, you know, than formatting a patch, mailing anything like that. It's just yeah. a single command and it's it's off your plate. You can move on to the next okay. thing. So you've committed the code to your local, you've git cloned the git repository, mm -hmm. you've changed the code, you've committed it to, you've committed it to your local uh, git repository and then mm -hmm. you um, git review. Git review. Yep. And then that's it. It just uh, it, so w the way it works is it is it um, uh, you know uh, compares the the uh, whatever. But it's, it's basically a push to a uh, it's a git push to a specific ref uh, in Garrett. And um, uh, I mean, if you if you dig all the way down to it, it's not much more than git push uh, Garrett refs. Or head colon refs for master, and what that does is it is it pushes any outstanding changes in your branch to to that special ref in Garrett. And since it says refs for master, Garrett says ah, this is a change or series of changes. Actually, uh, it can push up a whole series at once uh, that are intended for the master branch, and uh, they just show up automatically here. Yeah, so it, it under the covers basically magically creates branches on, not actual branches, but it creates magical <coughs> places for you to put them in Garrett hmm. so that you don't have, so that you're not, you're not having to push to a, to a privileged place. It's mm -hmm. rest for masters like a magical, right. 
it's like a magical ref. It's not a real ref on the, on the thing. Is it yeah, you, you can't go fetch something from refs for master. It's yeah. just, it, it, you know, that's, it's sort of a little Dropbox kind of place. Uh, and then, then, it, then what it does is it creates, uh, you know, a change record in its database. So, you know, it, it assigned it to change number 20,573. Uh, and then, um, then, it, then it does put that change uh, in a ref that you can get. So it actually does, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't like store the, the git uh, commit in a, in a private database or anything like that. It, it sticks it in the actual git repo, um, but it sticks it in there based on its change number. So what you can now do is, is you can run um, this command here, git fetch the URL, refs changes, 73 is just a hash, 20573 slash one is patch set one, and uh, anybody can download this change. Of course, that's actually what Zool is going to do. Uh, um, it's going to fetch this change, merge it, and start running tests on it. I mean, that's an interesting problem, too. Um, it's a very good thing to review code before you commit it, but it's somehow got to be safe about how you uh, separate the uh, exactly. code. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand that. Yeah, yeah. So there, that, that's, all, that's all completely unprivileged. Uh, anybody uh, in, in some Garrett installations, anybody with a, an account, which, you know, you can just get for, you know, all, all you have to do is register um, and upload an SSH key, and then you can upload changes. Uh, in ours, you have to agree to our contributor license agreement. Uh, once you've done that, then you can, you can you know, anybody can upload a, a change. Uh, but, you know, it, it, uh, it doesn't get merged until, obviously, um, you know, all of that review happens. Uh, on the right, or uh, so left, house left. Can you set up the git review? Does it copy the uh, comment book? Yes, that is one of the things that it does. Um, so it, uh, it um, you mean the Garrett commit book? Yeah, yeah. So Garrett has this, um, um, you know, I had this, Garrett is in the middle of a long, hey, exciting, long uh, transition to a, um, from these numeric IDs to um, SHAs for their um, change IDs because, because I mean, why wouldn't you want this to identify your change, right? Um, but at any rate, uh, that's, that's one of the mechanisms Garrett uses to detect if you're uploading a revised version of a, of a patch set. Um, if, if the change ID in the commit message uh, is a change ID that it already knows about, then it says, oh, you're pushing up patch set two of this change. Um, and, and so it does that instead of creating a new change. Um, there's a commit hook uh, that Garrett supplies that will write this change ID for you automatically um, as soon as you commit something. And, and so Git review, in addition to, to making, pushing changes up easy, uh, also tries to, to automate the, the initial setup of your repository. So it'll, it'll copy that Git hook uh, into place. It'll set up a Garrett remote uh, with your username and everything like that. Uh, we, we put a, a Git review, a dot Git review file at the top of our repos uh, with the URL of the, of the Garrett um, server. So you don't even have to configure that, like, like literally just clone from GitHub and type git review, and it'll, it'll do all of the configuration itself. It knows where to send changes. So you, you, your comment should, uh, should happen only after you set up the git review. Otherwise, your commits wouldn't have the change ID, and you would have to uh, yeah, uh, git, git review uh, detects if there's something been committed uh, without a change ID, and it does a, 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 a rebase or an amend or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, to, 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 to cause that to have a, a change ID added before it gets uploaded. So, so yeah, in fact, we, we wanted to handle that case too. The, the, just, it's just supposed to work with, without having to think about it. So, and in the back. Of the Gearman? Future thing. Uh, Gearman, is that? Gearman, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's not going to replace Jenkins. It's going to replace how we talk to Jenkins. Um, it's, uh, Gearman is, a, is a, a general job queuing and management system. Um, uh, it was written by the live 
journal guys originally. Um, it's the, the idea is, hey, you've got a bunch of servers um, that all you know all can run some job. So you know, if you're live journal, it's probably like scaling an image or something like that. And so if you need an image scaled, you you um, you submit a job to Gearman saying, hey, I need this image scaled. Gearman knows all of the machines that can run that job, and uh, it dispatches it to one of them, uh, and then reports the results back, which, of course, is exactly what we need with Jenkins. Jenkins you know, has lots of slaves that can run uh, jobs for us, um, and we need to get, them, get jobs dispatched to those slaves and then have their results reported back. So um, that kind of integration with, with Gearman makes a lot of sense. But then that also generalizes it so that we can have uh, more than one Jenkins master. Right now, Jenkins, uh, with an, I'm going to put an asterisk here and say uh, it's, it's, it doesn't really make sense in most situations to, to have more than one Jenkins master. There's, there's no real multi-master federation that, that you that you'd like um, at that level. And so Gearman will let us have multiple Jenkins masters. And it'll let us trigger on jobs that, on things that aren't Jenkins. We don't have any immediate plans for that. Um, but once we've separated um, the thing that decides what to run, which is Zool, from the thing that runs things, which you know could be Jenkins or could be self, or something else, and you know we use Gearman as the integration point, you know, we could we could dispatch to anything that we, we could, you know, we could have salt run things on uh, salt nodes, or you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so it'll, it, I think it'll be a really. We're trying to make that generalized too. So it'll be, it'll be great for what we're doing with Zool, but it, it'll also be um, hopefully generally useful to the, um, the Jenkins community. Yeah. All right, we're running out of time. So thanks very much.